Hello, and welcome to ASB TDC TV, a product of a partnership between the University of Arkansas Small Business and Technology Development Center and the Northwest Arkansas Council Small Business Emergency Assistance Program. In this series, we're talking with small businesses, experts, and ASB TDC consultants about the relevant and right now topics and solutions for small business. I'm Amy Robinson. And I'm Chris Case, and we're here today with Cal Rose from Wright Lindsay Jennings. Hi, Cal, how are you? Hey, Chris, I'm doing good. Thanks for having me. Good, absolutely. Well, we want to start off by you telling us a little bit about what you do, kind of the world you live in, and, um, you know, a lot of the common questions that you have. But tell us a little bit, bit about you and your practice. Okay, sure. Um, like you said, my name is Cal Rose. I work at Wright Lindsay and Jennings here in our Rogers office. We also have an office in Little Rock, but we are an Arkansas-based law firm. Um, everything I do in my practice is is on the small and, and emerging, growing business side of it. I mean, it's everything from the beginning phase, helping um, you know entrepreneurs and business owners talk through some of the issues we're going to talk through today, from formation, choosing the right entity, through um, you know moving on to the next step and hiring employees and doing. Uh, leases and business contracts all the way to the, to the end of the business life cycle, which is, you know, helping my clients either sell their business or pass it on to the next generation of, of owners. And so um, everything's uh, business based. If, if I'm in court, uh, somebody's in trouble, hopefully, probably me. Um, but I don't, you know, I don't litigate everything I do is, is behind the computer, so to speak, helping with contracts and working through a lot of um, tax and business and organizational issues. Yeah, and that's, I mean, those are the things that people uh, don't think about until they're in the thick of it and don't realize how important it is. And I think that, you know, one of the reasons that we as consultants, um, we, we kind of uh, bring people like you in because you get a lot of what we get a lot of, which is um, they walk in and say, okay, I need to form a business. When it, what entity do I need to be? Or um, for us, it's like, I need a marketing plan. Well, there's 28 steps before that, and then we can do that. So, um, so we definitely brought you in to talk a little bit about legal entities because they can be confusing, but I'm sure that you do get a lot of just walk in and say, how, what do I need to organize as? And as you know, it's a, it's a little more in-depth question than that. It is. It, yeah. And, and a lot of times it's the situation you don't want, which is it's the, Hey, I did this or, Hey, I signed this contract. <laughs> or, this is what I did. And, and now can we fix it? Um, Getting it right on the front end is a lot easier and efficient and cheaper uh, than having to clean a lot of things up on the, on the back end. And so, uh, absolutely, we, we get those questions all the time. And, and our job our job is to make sure that everything is done right the first time um, mm -hmm. and that you don't end up in court, you don't end up in litigation um, or uh, being audited from the IRS or anything like that. And so, um, absolutely. I mean, a lot of what we are, even in my role, is I'm not, a, I'm as much of an advisor as I am, you know, an attorney, you know, I'm a consultant just like you guys are in a lot of ways. Well, that's great. Well, and, and one of the things we wanted to talk about too are the different kinds of businesses, because I know back when I started my business years and years ago, I started as an LLC and then quickly then transformed into a, an S or a C, an S corp actually. Yep. And so can you tell us about that? And I mean, if you do, do an LLC, are you stuck with that or can you kind of transform into other entities? Sure. So first, we'll get some housekeeping things out of the way. I, I do, I'm obligated to let everyone watching know. I'm, I'm gonna provide general information, um, mm -hmm. overviews, just things that are generally applicable to, to everyone. Um, mm -hmm. You know, it's not legal advice. Uh, don't interpret it as legal advice. Don't rely on it as legal advice. Uh, you really should still follow up with your own personal attorney um, if you're going to go take any of the steps that we're going to talk about today to make sure that, um, you know, that attorney has all of the information, knows um, everything they need to know in order to make the right decision for you. And so um, with that out of the way, um, yeah, so LLCs is probably the, the most common entity that's formed today. Mm -hmm. um, a little bit of history is that LLCs in Arkansas did not exist prior to 1993. 1993 is when our uh, LLC Act was created. Um, and so because of that, we don't have a long history of case law. You know, corporations have been around for hundreds of years. And we have a, a lot of information about corporations. LLCs are newer. Um, and the law is still 
reacting to a lot of the issues that arise. And, and you bring up a good issue with the S Corp because one area where the law is still reacting um, is our tax laws. Our yeah. tax code was enacted in 1986. Mm -hmm. LLCs were created in 1993, which means <laughs> when our tax code was created in 1986, they didn't know anything about LLCs. Our tax yeah. code doesn't talk about LLCs. It doesn't say the word limited liability company in there. Right. Um, and so the way that we've evolved from there is the IRS now says, if you form an LLC, that's what you are for legal purposes, but for tax purposes, you can be whatever you want. You can be an escort for tax purposes. And so it's an important distinction to make because um, for tax, you have a lot of flexibility with an LLC. So in your situation, Chris, you may have formed an LLC from day one, and then you may have just made an election to be an S-Corp for tax purposes, but you're still an LLC. You're still, um, you know, in the eyes of the law, you're still an LLC. And so you're not stuck with it forever. You can make those changes for tax purposes. The one caveat to that is if you start as something, uh, as an LLC, and you make that tax election, you're stuck with it for five years. So once you decide to become an S Corp, you have to be an S Corp for five years. After five years, you can change it again. Um, but you know, even on the legal side, there are processes where you can transform and convert your LLC into a corporation. You can convert it into a partnership. Um, so there are, you're not stuck with it in, in most cases, other than that five year tax election. So let's talk a little bit about just kind of um, two things. I'd love to talk about what it is that you would love to see. Like in your ideal client walks in with this question world, um, what, what, would, what questions would you ask them or what questions would they have already considered um, uh, that, you, that you would love to, before you even put, point them in any direction toward any entity, what is it that you would love for people to have being, just at least consider um, when they come to you or when they are, are, there are basic, you know, very straightforward practical questions that should be considered before you even talk to an attorney or, um, you know, anyone about forming an entity and that's, you know, what name are you going to use and is it available? Um, mm -hmm. You know, before you go out and start marketing and creating, you know, a website, make sure that that name is something that somebody else isn't using. Um, and, you know, you don't want to put all of the time and work in, create this great business plan, get your company off the ground. And then as soon as you start becoming successful, you get a cease and desist letter. Because yeah. uh, the reality is, I could create a company today called McDonald's and if I never made any money and was never successful and never showed up on anybody's radar, I would never get a cease and desist letter. But yeah. if I turned into, you know, if I opened a second or third or fourth location, that's when you get on people's radar and, and that's whenever you um, are then told, hey, guess what? All that time spent for the last five years building that name brand recognition, it's all for naught because you're going to have to change it. Well, and um, I want to make a distinction, Cal. When you say, is a name available, that does not mean is such and such dot com available. The URL is completely different than the legal entity and that there is going to your state's website um, to to look that up and, and doing some other searches, not just the dot com, right? <laughs> right. That's right. And, and you know you're exactly right. And, and to take it a step further, uh, just because the state of Arkansas will let you form a company with a certain name does not mean that legally you have the right to use it. Um, you would really need to search, uh, do a trademark search um, that's nationwide, that's registered with the uh, Patent and Trademark um, Association. With so It's a public filing. You can look those things up. Yeah. Um, but again, I could form an LLC today called McDonald's Restaurants LLC. The Secretary of State would probably let me use that name. Um, but it does not mean that's a good idea or that right. in the long run that... Uh, I'm not going to get in trouble for doing it. So, yes, you're right. It's not just is the URL available, and it's not just will the Secretary of State allow me to do it. You really need to take it a step further and, and look at is there anybody else anywhere in the country that's especially in the same line of work that you're going to be in? Mm -hmm. um, are they doing the same thing? If so, you need to make sure you've differentiated your name from theirs. And like you said, that early search, not just in the legal part of it, but it will benefit you from a marketing standpoint as Save well. Save you a lot of heartache. <laughs> yeah. oh, I, yeah. I can't, I mean, I've had 
many horror stories of people who've you know, printed business cards and done, you know, just all yeah. of the marketing, spent money on all of this marketing. It's the fun stuff. <laughs> right, exactly. They, you know, they've gotten, they've built their website, they've done these things. Yeah. And then when they come to us, we say, have you looked at whether or not, you know, anybody else is using it? And then sure enough, you know, there's a, a competing store yeah. in Oklahoma, you know, right across the border that does the exact same thing with the exact same name. And we're like, mm -hmm. you know, we need to, we need to kind of change this up a little bit. And it's not a fun conversation, but I would rather correct it then um, than allow it to snowball and become you know, a 10 times bigger problem right. three years from now. Absolutely. So then um, you also had mentioned kind of um, really the, the big question is what are your future plans? What are, what are your long-term plans for this company or organization? So um, are we talking long-term as in the life of the company? I mean, some people walk in and they're just like, I have this idea. I don't know where it's going to go. So what are you, what are you looking for people to look through, look for? And that's, yeah, and that's to me, if you're really going to get down to what entity should I choose and what should my legal and tax structure should be, my first question is going to be, what is your objective for this company? What is your long-term goals and plans? Is this a startup company that, you know, you want to get investors right away and, and you want to sell off some shares and then eventually sell to a bigger company and do something else for the rest of your life? If that's what you want to do, we're going to form a different entity than is this a company that you and your wife or husband or, you know, partner uh, just want to actually run the business uh, for the next 10, 15, 20 years and, and eventually maybe pass it on to the next generation or even sell it 20 years from now. Yeah. If it's more of a this is going to be my source of income and my employment, we're going to form a much a different entity with a different tax structure than what we would do. Um, for the, the first example I gave. And so, you know, having some idea, and granted, not everybody knows. And there are a lot of people who go into it thinking, yeah, this is what I'm going to do for the next 20 yeah. years of my life. And then they're successful and somebody wants to buy it from them. And if that happens, you know, we can adjust. But, but having some idea of, um, you know, what is the long-term plan and goal for the company, that's, to me, is the most critical factor in, allowing you know, me as the attorney to choose and, and, and to give advice on, on what is the best structure. That's great. So we come to you and we've got a name and we've got a plan. Is, what other inf information would be really helpful to, to save you some heartache and, and time and, and, and help us out immediately? Um, you know, if, if, it's in two situations. I mean, it's different. If, if Chris, if you're the only owner I'll be honest with you, it's a very straightforward conversation, and all I need is your contact information, the name you want to uh, call the company, and, you know, maybe some, some other information to get some tax ID numbers and things like that. It's whenever you have partners where things become a little bit more complicated. Yeah. And so if you're going to have multiple business partners, you need to think through, okay, if it's a 50-50 relationship, well, what happens if one of you disagrees? What if you fundamentally don't agree on what direction to take the company? Um, what happens if one of you um, doesn't want to be involved in the company anymore? Or, or you know, the unfortunate situation, what if one of you passes away? Yeah. Um, do you, is your 50% partner now that person's children or spouse? Maybe you don't have as good of a working relationship with those people. And so um, in, in those scenarios, at least having thought through, and, and I don't expect clients to have all the answers. You know, that's what they're coming to us for, but at least having thought through, hey, you know, how are we going to make decisions if uh, we disagree? What is the, the resolution? Um, you know, a 50-50 business partnership in, in a lot of ways is like a marriage. It, yeah. ends in, it ends in one of two ways, death and divorce. Um, as, as the advisor on the front end, I like to make sure that in either of those scenarios, we have a very well thought out, clear path of how the company handles that situation. That way you don't end up in litigation. Um, yeah. You know, make sure none of my partners hear me say that, but my job really is to make sure that, that there is a clear path in, in whatever the situation is to make sure, um, you know, everybody knows what to do and we're not spending six months arguing about how to unwind a lot of things. Yeah. 
And I'll even piggyback on that because I know that we've had clients that don't understand that a partnership doesn't just mean two people either. Um, you can have multiple. And sometimes it's nice to have that triangulated um, decision tree kind of uh, breaking the tie um, relationship as well. So partnership is not is not strictly um, just two people and 50-50 and doesn't is also does not have to be the split. There can be a lot of different um, fractions in there. So so run through um, if somebody goes to the, the state website, you know, they're they're just ready to go. They're going to go to the state website. They've, you know, done some of the things that you what are they going to see there? What are the you know, you go there and you think, oh, it's just this, this and this. But the list of entities that you have to choose from can be a little bit overwhelming. Um, so I think that maybe you know, just in the interest of time, um, cause we're just going to say call cow. Um, <laughs> we, um, wondering what, uh, you know, what some of the, um, the primary ones are. So LLC and LLP sometimes get very confused. That's limited liability cor uh, company and limited liability partnership. And right. then you have a lot of, uh, you have a few different formations of corporations. Yep. So you have, I mean, you have LLP, you have LPs, you have LLPs, you have LLLPs, you have LLCs, you have uh, nonprofit corporations, you have yeah. benefit corporations, uh, normal corporations. Uh, if you go to the Secretary of State's website and click on forms, uh, your mind's, your head's probably going to spin for about three or four minutes before you find the right one, you know, for most people. And, and this is one of those, again, where I have to always caution you that this is general advice. Yes. For most people, you are going to form most likely either an LLC or a corporation. I mean, those are the two. If, if there were statistics that were, um, you know, available, I would guess that 95%, if not more, of, of new businesses are formed as LLCs or um, as corporations. Mm -hmm. LPs, LLPs, the, all of the limited partnership vehicles um, are primarily used today in estate planning. Um, and some professional organizations, you know, we talked about it earlier, once LLCs were created in 1993, it really, um, it, it really kind of took the advantages that all of those limited partnership vehicles had and made it a lot easier uh, to operate. And so LLCs tend to be probably the, the most common that we see. Um, and because of that, if you just Google it, or if you talk to, you know, an accountant or just one of your friends, they may say, yeah, you know, just being an LLC, that's the easiest. Mm -hmm. in, you know, in my estimation, being an LLC is probably the right decision for you know, the majority, let's call it two thirds of people. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, if you just take that general advice and form an LLC every time, that means one out of every 30 people are forming the wrong entity for right. you know, their enterprise. And so just because it's the right decision for most people generally doesn't mean it's the right decision for you. Um, but when you go to that website, they do have a separate a section just for LLCs, you know, they'll have a, all kinds of documents and filings. The, the most critical one are the articles of organization. Mm -hmm. That's what you file to actually create the LLC. Right. Um, that's what is on file with the Secretary of State. Outside of that, you still need an operating agreement. An operating agreement is a much more encompassing document. It's essentially what you think of as like your partnership agreement for an LLC. Um, it talks about how decisions are made. Are they a simple majority? Um, are they unanimous? Um, what, how do we make distributions? Um, how do we, uh, what happens if somebody wants to sell their ownership? Or what happens if uh, they're no longer involved in the business? So it has all of the agreements between the owners, but that's a private document. It's not on file with Secretary of State. It's not even gonna be listed on the Secretary of State, but it is required and you need one. Um, so a lot of times people, especially if they go through LegalZoom or just, you know, do it themselves, they will file the articles and they'll have that document, yeah. but they won't have an operating agreement and they won't have anything in place if there's ever a disagreement with one of their you know, fellow business partners. Right, right. And changes can be made. Um, I will say that, you know, just like Chris was saying earlier, um, you know, anybody that's out there that's listening that was like, oh no, I did the wrong thing. It, you know, some changes can be made and, and they're a little bit messy. And so 
all of us would love for um, you know people to walk in with a lot more of this information and being able to do um, uh, not do that to themselves, but it is possible to um, to fix or undo some of these things. Um, and the other thing I think, Cal, when you were talking about long-term planning and the other things that people don't understand are, are things like parent companies, um, you know, and, and kind of like, you, you know, you could name your LLC or corporation, you know, Jones Family Enterprises and then have entities underneath them um, because people do fall in love with the names of their companies and their brand and um, and all of these things that go into the image of the company. And so there are other in that longer term planning, you know, if you are going to have multiple companies down the line or multiple businesses, there's another um, consideration um, for that. And ultimately, I think our, our message to everyone always is consult a professional, please. <laughs> we really do um, encourage that. And, you know, as much as we love you at ASB TDC, TDC um, Cal, you're not the only attorney in the world. And there are a lot of really good attorneys in, um, in the region. <laughs> And, um, and, and people to walk you through that. And um, additionally, you, we've mentioned this a couple of times and touched on, you know, tax advisors um, are another really, really big partner um, for small businesses when it comes to forming these entities. Because um, after you do this process, it is creating um, a tax ID number and how to um, create your bookkeeping, which we will have in some other episodes of, of this. Um, so thank you, Kyle. Is there any last bits of wisdom that you want to share with anybody before we uh, before we sign off on this up very important episode? No, uh, yeah. Do a little, do your homework. Talk to uh, you know Amy and, and Chris and everybody at uh, UASBTDC. The great resources. Um, the good thing about being in Northwest Arkansas is we have a ton of really, really, really helpful resources that. Uh, people in other parts of the country don't have. There are a lot of people out there willing to help you. Um, and so, you know, the resources are there. You just have to take advantage of them, go out there and, uh, you know, keep, keep adding to the, the great entrepreneurship ecosystem we have up here in Northwest Arkansas. Absolutely. Well, thank you. And if you are watching or listening, thank you for joining us. If you have a suggested topic, a question that you need answered, someone that you'd like to hear from, like Cal, or a story that you'd like to share, please contact us at bizhelp at uark.com. That's B-U-S-H-E-L-P at uark.edu. And put the TV in the subject line. If you are interested in benefiting from our free one-on-one -on -one assistance, as Cal suggested, thank you, Cal, please sign up at sbtdc.uark.edu. Thank you again for joining us, Cal. Thank you. We appreciate okay. it.